I'd like to make a song. So the first thing I want to do is create a loop of drums so that I can then use that as my rhythm to play my guitar to. So what I'm going to do first is go to this window here and go to workspace. Now this will show me all the attached drives on my computer. Now I keep all my loops on my samples drive. So I double click on that and open it. And then I want to go to my Apple loops. Okay, there's one called Apple loops there, which I've got broken down into that. Now I'm going to keep that as my favorite window. And to create a favorite window, we go to window, configurations, I go new configuration, call it fave loops. That's now my fave loops. Now I come to the window now. And there it is. So if I lose this window at any point, so if I come out of it, simply go to configurations and fave loops. And there it is. So I'd like to do some auditioning. Now, the great thing is because of Elastic Audio in Pro Tools, we can audition our loops at the tempo that the session is set at. So at the moment, it's set at 120 beats per minute. Now, a few things you want to get set up and make sure they're ready before you start doing your auditioning is you want to make sure that these three right mouse click here on this speaker, choose loop preview, auto preview, and spacebar toggles file preview, which means that if I hit the spacebar, it will start to play. So if I come to my drums, for example, and choose uh, and it'll play any audio that I've got in there. If you're just going through, I'm going through with my uh, up and down arrows on my keyboard. Now, you know, I like that. Now, the cool thing is as well is because we've got this selected, that uh, metronome icon, it's playing that at the speed of the track. That's what it was originally recorded at. Choose that in Elastic Audio. It's now auditioning that at the speed of the track. And I like that. Now, you want to make sure as well that you have your algorithm set right. So for drums and percussive stuff, choose rhythm. Keyboards and guitars and voices and stuff, choose polyphonic. And for things like basses and any kind of solo instrument, choose monophonic. So rhythm is right. You can turn it up and down here. I like that. You know, I'm going to drag that into my track and get ready. It drops it in, and you'll see that Task Manager come up. Just move that out of the way. That's fine. And we want to come to this tool here. Make sure if you click on the top of this tool, at the top there, you can choose it. We call it a smart tool, and we'll look at that in a while when we start doing some editing. Just pick it up and drag it to the start of the track. And you can hear the click track now. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to play that in a loop. If you want to play it in a loop, you right mouse click here on the play icon on the transport window and choose loop. You can hear the metronome because it's there. So we know it's playing in time with the track now. Yep, I like that drum part. You know what? I'd like to add a second percussion part. And so we're going to go to window. And we're going to go back to configurations, favorite loops. We're going to percussion. Now, here's the cool thing. We can now play this track. Come to the favorite loops. Go to percussion. And start to audition some percussion while it's playing. down again. Now if I want to find a shaker, I can just go to that uh, magnifying glass there and type in shaker. And all the shakers on my hard drive will be found. number five. So again, just pick it up and drag and drop it. Creates a new track. Let's bring it to the front of the track. Turn it down a bit. And we can go in a bit closer. Now here's a keyboard shortcut that's worth knowing. Press the command or control key on your keyboard and press the bracket on the right and it zooms in. The bracket on the left and it zooms out. So I'm going to zoom in a bit closer. I'm going to choose that loop. 
Now make sure that this is selected because when you select this, then it will actually play back the bit of audio in terms of that will now select. If I click that here, there, then it will then, if that's turned on, it will then play back the bit I've selected. Well, that bit that's turned off, then it will just carry on as it was before. So I use that all the time. There we go, we've got two loops in. Come back next time and we're going to add a guitar. Thanks for watching.